today's video I'm going to be sharing to you my experience as uh, here in the lab. So I only have one day here. So this is a one day travel guide here in the lab. And by the way, you need to have this happy. So I got this from the hostel where I am staying. Uh, it is a list of attractions as well as restaurants and other stuff that you can do here in the lab. And starting off with Chunker Walk Street. It is the Chunker Walk Street. During daytime, but during nighttime, this is close to vehicles because many people would come here and. This man, the father of bodybuilding in Malaysia, was responsible for the uh, building up of Changer Walk. Amazing. He is recognized as a hero of Changer Walk. Wow. And by the way, you might find it difficult to find breakfast here in Malacca, especially before 9 a.m., since most of the shops here open by 9 a.m. And we are now here in front of the Ark of the Junker Walk. So Junker Walk is known worldwide among serious antique collectors. It's one of the best places to hunt and bargain for antiques. Recently, a new wave of cafes and craft shops have sprouted on this street, lending it a cultured air of old and new. Amazing. Okay, this is what you will see. Our second stop is the Cheng Hun Tang. It is a premier historical monument that has survived the ravages of time. It was founded in the 1600s by the Chinese Capitan Tai Ki Ki alias Tai Hong Yong. In its early years, besides serving the community's religious needs, the temple also functioned as the official administrative center in the court on justice for the capital. Okay, let's go inside. And our third stop is Kampung Kling Mosque. Kampung Kling Mosque is an old mosque located at Jalan Pukang Emas, also known as Harmony Street. Harmony Street portrays a sense of harmony between the major races in Malaysia and temples of different religions. Okay, this is a unique mosque because their tower is not the same with the design of other mosques. So the tower is something like that. Explains the unique design of this mosque. Completed in 1748, the architecture of this mosque is Sumatran with strong Hindu influences. This is particularly evident in the minaret which resembles a pagoda. On closer inspection, you will find an unusual blend of English and Portuguese glazed tiles, Corinthian columns with symmetrical arcs in the main prayer hall, a Victorian chandelier, a wooden pulpit with Hindu and Chinese style carvings, and a Moorish cast iron lamppost in the place of ablation for pre-prayer cleansing. So the Kampong Queen Mosque remains central to Malay community life. Okay, this is what it looks like here. Unfortunately, I cannot get inside because I'm not in my proper attire. So I'll just have a closer look here. This is what you will see here. Our fourth stop is Sri Poyatha Vinayagar Murthy Temple. 
This is built in 1781 and it is the oldest Hindu temple in Malaysia and one of the oldest functioning Hindu temples in maritime Southeast Asia. It is located in the state of Malacca and the temple is one of the few existing Chiti temples in Malaysia. And I guess you are not allowed to take pictures inside. Okay, check this out. My friend, remember this spot? <laughs> Like, look at all these people, tourists. Malacca is really full of tourists, especially Chinese tourists. Like, they are everywhere. They love Malacca so much. Hi, our next stop is Christchurch. So the Christchurch is built in 1883 by the Dutch, which took 12 years to build. Then the eight foot long ceiling beams were cut in one piece and constructed without joints. Amazing. And the handmade views are original and date back to 100 years. Look at that. And the color is also strange because it's red. So let's check if we can get inside. This is what's inside the Christ Church here in Milaka. This is a bit small church, but it's so beautiful. Look at that. I'm still here inside the uh, Christ Church. So, by the way, Christ Church is an Anglican church. So, meaning it is part of the Protestant, so it's not Catholic. And at the back are the list of the chaplains that serve this uh, church. Um, it dates back to 1641. Okay, this is what you will see here inside the Christ Church. We're down to our next stop, which is the Statoids. So it was built in 1650 and it is said to be the oldest Dutch building in Southeast Asia. Amazing. And in the present, it was converted into a historic museum, which is the best. And there are a lot of people here. And let's now go inside the Statoids. There's a museum here. Museum Sejara Ethnography. History, Ethnography, and Literature Museum. So if you're a foreigner, an adult farmer, the entrance fee is 10 ringgit. That's what you will see here inside. And this is what you will see here as well. Let's climb here in this part of the stand soil. And this is the best spot for you to take pictures here. Look at all those people.
next stop is the Portuguese wall. Okay, this is what you will see here around. So the port, this wall is part of the port of Malacca. And during the Malay Sultanate, the port of Malacca was the busiest in the world due to two factors. First, the Malay rose of Malacca took pains to maintain the security of the Malacca Straits, thus directing much of the trade flow in the world. And second, the Malacca Maritime Law ensured the trade was regulated fairly, watched over by the harbour master who had a final say in all transactions. Yes. But due to some problems, and uh, it has become narrow and silted, it was able to handle less large transcontinental cargo ships. And it was abandoned by the British at the expense of the development of Penang and Singapore. So that is why the port of Malacca eventually fell into neglect. Next stop is the Islamic Museum here in Malacca. The Islamic Museum of Malacca was set up not solely for the purpose of exhibiting documents and artifacts pertaining to the Islam religion, but also to research on how Islam came to Malacca and how the religion spread to the entire country. If you are interested to get inside the museum, the entrance fee is 3 ringgit for adults and 2 ringgit for students. And the visiting time is 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon and they are closed on Monday. And we are now down to our next spot which is the St. Paul Hill. So this one is a bit famous here in Malacca. St. Paul's Church stands at the summit of St. Paul's Hill. The church is renowned as the place where the body of Francis Xavier, the pioneering Catholic missionary of Southeast Asia, was laid to rest for a period of eight months after his death. So let's climb now to the hill so that we can see the St. Paul's Church. This is what you will see here on top overlooking this one. And you could clearly see, I think that's the Alabama Tower. This is what you will see here. And up there is the St. Paul's Church. what you will see here the ruins of St. Paul's Church okay this Catholic Church the oldest church in Southeast Asia began only as a chapel built in 1521 by a Portuguese sea captain Duarte Coelho okay this is what you will see here inside Amazing. Look at that. It's just a small church actually. But it's very old. Look at that. And 
this, by the way, is another entrance going up to St. Paul's Hill. Yes. And now let's go to our next stop, which is Akamosa. And I am now here in front of the Akamosa. So this was built by the Portuguese Admiral Alfonso Carpenter. But however, this fortress was not that damaged during the Dutch invasion in 1641. Only remains the front. So this is the front gate of the Hamas. So I'll show you around here. Okay, this is what you will see here. It is now what remains the Famosa. I wonder how big this fortress is before. And as you saw, there are a lot of tourists here. I think they are Chinese. And this is the front of Athamosa. Amazing. This is what it looks like here around the Afamosa, the famous fortress but was damaged 